Hello, this is Evan Rogerson, 9 Butter Gang here, and today we'll be going down and breaking down BrickBot, um, aptly named because it has two bricks inside of it. Um, so I'm going to go through how it worked, um, all the cool things that it could do, kind of the design philosophy behind that. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe in order to please the YouTube algorithm, and let's get into it. So first off, we'll kind of talk about size. This guy is like 15 inches tall. He's our 15-inch robot, 15 inches wide, and then about 13.5 inches long. And the claw flipped up in order to start inside, and then it's actually spring-loaded. So you can see right in there, we have a spring that's being compressed and it's got a pretty high spring constant. So that definitely wants to be pushed out. You can see the metal's actually kind of bending back there a little bit. Um, and then as we raise the lift, it just kind of slides out from under those two pieces there. And that's kind of the only purpose of this thing is just to act as a catch. And you'll notice that's at like the exact right height um, to then go ahead and score on like a mobile goal or something. Uh, the alliance stake is what we did for auto. So we would like start above the alliance stake every single match. Um, so we didn't even have to move to score. And that was extremely consistent. Um, so let me just kind of show that again. So to get it in size, we just kind of put that in there. Um, turn off the program and kind of lower the lift. That thing kind of just bend it out to the side and then bend it back in. So those screws were intentionally loose. And then as you can see, I should just be able to raise and lower the lift and it'll score the ring. And scored. So it didn't have to move and that was pretty fast and efficient. Um, then I guess we can go ahead and move on to the claw. So it is mounted all on a hinge. And we had some rubber bands pulling it down. Um, they snapped a fair amount in the scrimmage the other day. However, um, we kind of stopped placing them out because we realized we weren't going to be continuing on with BrickBot. So they're just some dead rubber bands there, but those just kind of help keep the claw hinged down. Um, the spring gets it started because right now that's pure vertical. So those rubber bands aren't applying a lot of force because um, they're just pulling down, not out. So the spring would kind of push it out and then the bands would keep it down once the spring's no longer in contact. Then we have uh, 48 tooth gears acting as our claw mechanism to kind of keep the two halves of the claw even. We have a two inch strip length cylinder running across in between and that's drilled into the poly. And then these pieces of polycarbonate are um, a 16th of an inch thick. And then that guy is an eight of an inch thick piece of poly, um, which is legal for Vexu because this is raw stock and not polycarbonate. Um, so we cut it ourselves and stuff just with tin snips because we don't have a CNC machine or anything even remotely fancy like that. Um, so yeah, and claw's pretty basic. You just open, close. Um, in terms of mechanical. Um, Design-wise, it's a little bit more than that. Um, it's designed to be able to grab onto the goal post when you drive into a goal. So you can see here, if I drive into this goal at speed, and then I close the claw. Um, you can kind of see when I take off these top few rings, it's like grabbed around the post. Um, so that makes it really easy to grab onto other people's goals and then once we have a goal it's secured and like you can pull out there and due to the geometry of how we have it angled i mean pulling out isn't going to do anything um like you can pull on that as much as you want and it's not dropping the goal and then we can just sort of lift up the goal and now the goal is ours and we can also go all the way back there and now nobody else is even remotely tall enough to get to our goal and that could do that with goals with six rings. It could do that with anything. Um, so that was quite nice for the claw. And that this guy worked very well for grabbing it. And then you could also... And then I guess moving back, we had a chain bar lift for this guy in order to get him raising the goals. Um, and also that was for scoring rings. So... Go down into the ground, grab on, and score rings on the goals. I'm not the driver for this guy. And also, it could reach up all the way to the neutral wall stakes, um, right there. And this is pretty standard for chain bar. Um, up in the top right, I'll have a link to my chain bar video that kind of covers all that. Really, the only unique thing is, is those are 18 tooth sprockets and those are 16 tooth sprockets, which we painfully printed ourselves. That was a real pain because our printers suck and 
they did not like printing these uh, nicely, so it took us a few tries to actually get it printed correctly, even with the same dimensions. But those are 16 tooths and those are 18 tooths, which means that the lift actually rotates the claw up. You can see the claw is not level to the ground there, which helps on the alliance stakes because you just have that extra little bit of height there. Um, and also means that when you're on the ground, you're like flat with the ground, um, which makes it really nice for picking up rings. Uh, so that's kind of all there is for the lift, pretty basic. Um, it's two motors, so one motor over there, one motor over there. Uh, both 100 rpm motors and then we have a 12 to 84 tooth gear ratio um, and that was just to have enough torque to be able to easily lift up mobile goals and also other robots by their mobile goals okay, next up i guess we can kind of move into the drive base because that's really all that's left for this robot um, there's a couple of things we have like some distance sensors inertial sensors i really do like how compact this robot is um, that's probably my favorite thing about it other than the bricks um, so this is 10 motor drive. Uh, these are all prints, and these are printed around the time that our printer died. So these were about the last good things that we got off. You can actually see this print over there. Um, it actually failed halfway through. Well, not halfway, about 95% done. So like, it's not actually a finished print on the robot. And then after that, our printers just sort of like stopped doing anything even remotely good. Um, so these massive prints, and you could argue, yeah, well, they're not very weight efficient, but uh, that's kind of the point. Um, so these have mounts for the motors that the motors just kind of slot into. Um, and then these have the bearings on the outside here with all the holes lined up. Um, so that would basically meant that once we had our gear ratio catted out, um, we could just sort of print the entire thing. And then room for like a cross brace mount at the back here. And they have a couple holes for us to put, I believe it's a two inch stand dust because this is a four hole gap drive base. We tried three hole gap originally. Um, but that definitely didn't work due to gear skipping, um, which I'll kind of get to in a bit. And we got the battery down there under these motors, um, and we got the air tank down under those motors. Um, another distance sensor there. So the drive base, um, those are 36 tooth gears on these top three motors right there. And then this motor right there, uh, Second tallest um, at the back has a 36 tooth gear and a 48 tooth gear right there. Um, so these are all spinning at 200 RPM and then that's 48 to 48. So that's still 200 RPM. We just did change up the spacing there so we could get a bit more compact at the top. And then from that 48 tooth gear right there, um, that actually meshes with this 60 tooth gear. Um, and that 60 tooth gear is our slider gear because we have a speed transmission on this robot, which was, um, the gear ratio was definitely something finicky because getting something that was not gonna be too fast in speed mode and not too slow in torque mode was definitely a challenge. Um, so speed transmission, when it's in speed mode, which is what this is right now, a 48 meshes with the 60 tooth gear. 60 tooth meshes with a 36 tooth gear down there. You can just make it out right in the middle of the screen. And then that meshes to an idler gear, which I believe is 60 tooth, and then 24 tooth gears on the drive base, which gives us a final speed of 400 RPM. And then we can shift ourselves over. So we have a small cylinder. I believe those are just half inch stroke length. Um, and those are just mounted off of C-channels right in there. Um, and I believe it's this button. Yep. And then they don't shift right away, but as soon as you move the drive base at all, they just shift right over. And now we are in torque mode. Um, so that's still meshed right there. And then now that is, that's a 60 tooth idler gear. So then that runs 36 down to 60 right in there. And that 60 tooth gear is on the same shaft as the 36 tooth gear. Um, and then that 36 tooth gear, again, 60 tooth idler, 24 tooth. And I believe that's 144 RPM, which ended up working pretty well speed wise for all of our stuff that we wanted. And now that it's in speed mode or torque mode, I should say, um, oops, wrong button. Um, He is very slow and powerful, um, so that's cool. Additionally, the robot's meant to be heavy um, and have really good traction, so that's why we only have four wheels on the drive base. Um, traction wheels at the front to try and move the center of rotation as far forward as possible. That way, the gold clamp will be a more efficient lever because shorter arm. And then in addition to the bricks, um, which I should let me take out real quick, These are just kind of slot in there with a couple rubber bands wrapped around them. 
We also have some steel plates at the bottom too, uh, just to give us more traction with the ground. Um, so this guy, he was pretty good. That kind of covers the basics for how the robot worked. Um, and then as far as robot performance, it was quite good at stealing goals and grabbing on. The claw here is an absolute menace, especially in tandem with this really strong drivetrain. Um, I'll definitely put up some clips of us stealing goals or just absolutely plowing through people to get to their positive corner. Um, the main issue was the drive base likes to shred itself. As you saw in speed mode especially, um, there we go, like, all right, let me put the bricks back in, that way it has the traction, um, which that's why you need the bricks, is for traction. Bricks back in traction. You can hear that skipping, and it was worse yesterday. Um, we did do some, a couple of minor repairs throughout the day, but we are just shredding the gears. Um, Vex gears are not designed to handle the amount of force that we are trying to put on these guys. Um, and I'll put up some pictures of some of the gears that we shredded yesterday um, and before, but like, we're just breaking gears like all over the place. So, um, yeah, we don't have access to a good enough printer in order to like 3D print gears because um, our good printers broke. And even if we did um, like have the ability to print really good gears, um, I'm sure that there would definitely be other issues with traction and the robot it obviously wasn't perfect. Uh, there were a couple cases where the gold clamp didn't quite get onto the other team and it took a longer than we wanted in order to be able to actually get the goal away from them. And then even then, um, in an optimal scenario, this guy's pretty much always going to lose Auton just because he can't score rings really fast. Um, for 15 seconds, I was only able to get like a two ring Auton working um, just because it's not designed to score points. So we're kind of pivoting away from that and going to another strategy, probably just building a meta robot. But that's kind of it for Brick. Um, let me know if you have any questions or comments down below, and I will see you in the next one.